So thank you very much for joining me today. Um, it's kind of overwhelming the amount of interest that was uh, put forth in this session. So thank you for that. Uh, it's great to feel that level of support, um, even if it is all virtually. So welcome to the content creation and integration of augmented reality session um, for the ADE Festival of Learning 2020. So just some housekeeping um, before we get into the, the crux of everything is please use the chat um, for questions or comments. Um, I will try and answer all the questions at the end, uh, if that's okay. If, uh, if you are having any technical issues, please put it in the chat and I will try and address that if, uh, if something comes up while the session's going on. I'm just gonna ask that you please keep yourself muted. I know we're all working in a variety of different locations and so we, we can't necessarily control what's happening around us. But if you can keep yourself muted, um, that would be really helpful for everyone to be able to hear. I will open it up for a Q&A at the end of the session um, to try and answer any questions. Um, the session is being recorded. It was requested uh, just owing to the time difference that this session is recorded. So um, it is happening right now. Um, and if you do share, if you're gonna be tweeting throughout the session or after, please try and promote the hashtag AR in EDU 2020. I'm kind of on a mission right now to get people really interested in using augmented reality in the classrooms for this coming year. So please do share, because I'd love to see what you come up with. Um, and if there's anything that you're taking away from our session today, please do tag me as well. Um, my um, username is at 85 for Twitter. So to introduce who I am, I'm Lindsay Studdard. I'm a digital teaching and learning specialist for an international school here in the UK. What that means is I basically work with 250 teachers on our campus to learn more about the ed tech that they use and how to integrate it into their curriculum and into their classrooms. I've been involved in education for 16 years. I have a master's in early childhood education. I'm a very, very proud member of the ADE class of 2019. I'm so thrilled to see that so many of my peers are joining me today. Um, and I did pilot the hashtag 25 days of AR challenge last December on Twitter. So at the end of the session, please go back onto Twitter and look up that hashtag. There's lots of great examples from educators from all over the world of things that they were sharing during that challenge. So do check it out um, as well. So what you're gonna need for our session today is your iPad. You need to have the AR Maker app as well. Um, you need to have Keynote. And then if you do have an Apple Pencil or any kind of stylus, um, this is really helpful. Otherwise you can use your finger, but it just makes it a bit easier for content creation, um, especially when you're working in Keynote. So if you have one, fantastic. If not, don't worry, that's okay. I am going to give a few quick honorable mentions. Um, the main focus of our, our session today is on AR Maker, but I did want to highlight two other AR apps um, that I, I highly recommend. One, a big shout out to Jacob Woolcock. I don't know if he's in here today. I know he was going to try and pop in. Um, following on from his app smashing live session when I talked about the clone EDU application, um, he was able to get in contact with the company and get 100 licenses for the app. Uh, normally it's at $9.99 for the app and he has been able to secure about 100 licenses for educators. It's a fantastic application. If you're not into 3D design, this app allows you to scan any three-dimensional object and bring it in so that you can then put it into something like Reality Composer or um, the other app I'm gonna mention, which is Scavenger. So thank you to Jacob Wilcock for organizing that for us. And the other app I want to mention real quick, I've been uh, in contact with the company and I'm doing a bit of uh, trialing and testing for them, is the app Scavenger or Scavenge AR. It's a virtual scavenger hunt application that allows you to either play um, augmented reality scavenger hunts that other people have created, or to create your own. You can bring in um, 3D creations, you can bring in, um, I think it, however you pronounce it, GIF or GIF uh, files, or you can have questions embedded in there as well. And your students get to move around outside and it's, it's a really fun application. I'm starting to develop a bit more um, for the company. So yeah, honorable mentions. And I know Paul Hamilton uh, is also working on uh, Scavenger as well. So check those out. So what I'm going to aim to cover in our session today is looking at the purposeful use for augmented reality in education, understanding the AR Maker app, um, the interface, the platform, and then we're going to explore a bit of content creation and importing to AR Maker. And that's sort of going to be our hands-on um, part of this session. 
So let's first take a look at the purposeful use for augmented reality. So the use of augmented reality in classrooms should be to enhance what you already do, um, to bring new life and meaning that takes a project even further. So what I've found for AR in classrooms is that it comes in to elevate what you already do um, because of the type of technology that it is. <clears throat> it brings to life what was pre previously thought to be impossible, um, and that's where the elevation is now occurring with the, with the use of the technology. And so our focus is really going to be looking at the AR Maker app <clears throat> for iPad. Um, I have a strong PYP background, and one of the critical things when you're a PYP teacher is planning um, and really thinking about what your outcomes are going to be for students because they obviously take the direction uh, of a unit themselves. But we always start with, with thinking about specific questions. And when it's come to the use of augmented reality, I've found that these questions can be really helpful in guiding you um, when you're thinking about bringing AR into your class. The most critical being, will this enhance what we are already doing? And then that can start to think um, about, you know, why should my students use augmented reality? And then what is your expected outcome at the end? What do you hope that the kids are going to achieve through the use of AR? Is it a better understanding of augmented reality itself? Or is it that they were able to express what they've learned about the content or the subject matter through the use of AR? You also need to be um, very aware of how much time you have to devote to AR, especially if you've got beginners or people that haven't really experimented with it too much. Um, I definitely think it's worth um, having a, a longer period of time or a longer unit to devote to uh, really purposefully use of AR. And then thinking about what do my students need to know? And what I mean by this is if you're going to implement AR, what do your students need to know about the tools that you're going to be asking them to use, whether it's AR Maker, or Reality Composer, any other AR application? What do they need to know technically ahead of time, whether it's terms or whether it's the use of the platform? Or what do you um, want your students to know in terms of the content or the subject matter that they will be using and bringing into um, AR for, the, for that purpose? So I really like these questions. Um, obviously, there's other ones that you can use, but I find that they're very helpful um, in guiding my thought process for the use of AR. So if you start with that one, um, will this enhance what we are already doing, you can then begin to identify your purpose. Um, and, and realistically, your, your purpose is that the AR is presenting an opportunity that's not possible without, uh, without it being um, used that way. So AR, um, if you've been following anything recently about AR, you're seeing lots of different things that people are doing with it in their classrooms. So um, I've highlighted a few of them. I'm going to talk about a few of them. But you can absolutely do digital storytelling, you can create story settings, you can bring your art to life, you can create math problems, you can do reenactments of historical moments, you can create visual timelines, look at design, do coding, implement project based learning, display science projects, have art displays, or even do some problem solving. So there's really no limit to what you can do with AR, um, you just really have to find that purposeful use and that natural fit to uh, using it with, um, with your subject matter. Um, I have made this free in the description of the course online. It's a tool that I developed for, um, for students to use. I found, and I'm sure many of you as well, uh, find that when your students get on the technology, they sometimes just whoosh, forget everything that you ask them to do and they just want to get exploring. Um, so really have them use these types of tools for planning and executing. Um, I've put on the first section sort of the grid, and this is a grid-based um, tool that the kids get to use, if they really have an understanding of where they're going to start placing things, um, then it becomes a bit more meaningful, and then they have a bit of a better understanding of what it's going to be like when they get in the app, and they can think, where am I going to place the different things that I'm going to be bringing in? And then on the flip side of that is a checklist. So if you're expecting to see um, certain types of content, um, you can have the students create a checklist and even um, attach a, a specific behavior, which I'll mention um, in more detail in just a, um, a few minutes. But this is a really great way to help the kids get organized before they even get into the app. So please download it, use it however you'd like. I hope it comes in handy. So we're going to cover just a few different examples. You might have seen this one that I posted a while back, but this was for an Ocean Zones unit that I did with um, some students. Basically, the students researched animals that they're interested in um, that live in the ocean. They created PNG digital drawings of their animals. 
The drawings were then uploaded to AR, and then they added in um, labels with descriptors and different facts that they had researched about the animals. And then using the iPad screen recording feature, they took their viewers on a virtual tour. Um, I know that a lot of primary or early childhood classes tend to do ocean units uh, more towards the end of the school year to kind of wrap everything up and get ready and geared up for summer. But this is um, a, a way that you could take it to that next level by having your students create all of the content they're going to be using and then they go on that virtual tour with um, with their uh, viewer. So it really becomes more meaningful. And yet you could absolutely just do it on a poster or make a book or make a regular presentation. But the fact that they design everything, they do the research, they add in the descriptors, then they take you on the tour guide. It just takes it to a whole new level. So this was a really fantastic unit um, that we did and, and absolutely could be applied to really any content area that you're going to be looking into. Um, another one that uh, could be a, a great way of doing this is from a teacher. Um, so it doesn't have to be a student project, it could be a teacher project where you're trying to get your students to understand a concept um, from a different perspective. So I know a lot of teachers also do a mini beast or a bug unit. And so this is a great example where using camera angles and using something like Apple Clips, you can be in the perspective of um, a particular type of insect add in the text, make it a bit more interesting, and then what's the experience of the experience now, what's the importance of these in our society, or in our community. So just using the camera angle as well, and then they are really quite Um, building a coding maze. Uh, I teach coding as one of the side parts of my job for early childhood. And there's lots of different ways that you can use AR Maker when it comes to coding is you could make almost a, a virtual obstacle course like you can see with Bebot up there using the camera angles as well with AR Maker, Bebot is going to go through a maze that we've determined for him and then plan out, uh, you know, how many times he's going to have to move to get through the different obstacle courses. In the image, or sorry, the video down to the bottom left corner, you've got content that came with AR Maker um, combined with a paper grid that's underneath and paper arrows to give directions. So students can set up um, a grid and they can place all their content on the grid using the camera, either film or um, take a screenshot, and then maybe someone else in their class has to solve it. Uh, but definitely creating a, a coding maze with their own content is really good. And if you can see in the sort of the bottom right corner, this is my feet right there, but building a physical maze that you can actually walk through. Um, and I used uh, the drawing features of AR Maker to make different colored uh, sections and then built a maze that I could physically go through or that I could have a student physically go through and they have to figure out what would the coding directions be to make it through that maze. So um, absolutely, yep, yeah, you can use AR Maker or AR in general for coding concepts, um, even with really, really young kids. Create a museum, and this could be um, really for any type of content area. World Book Day is really, really big here in the UK. And so uh, you might have seen this a while back, but it's a fantastic example of getting kids to um, share and, and take you on a physical journey through a museum that they've designed as a piece of book, a piece of art, a piece of history. Uh, it could be a visual timeline that's like walking through a TV um, and then you can find those uh, screen recordings. Another great way of using AR books. Visual math. I know someone down in the chat mentioned before that it's great for teaching math. And yes, absolutely. Um, you can make your own shapes that you can bring in and then talk about fractions or talk about percentages and decimals by the visual representations that you can make. So absolutely visual math um, with augmented reality. Science displays. Um, being able to attach different animations and behaviors to the different items that you bring into AR Maker to make it seem like it's more alive. This was the star life cycle that I created and very, very simple to do, but it takes on a whole new meaning for students when they see it represented in that way. So yeah, absolutely, you could use augmented reality for science. Theater and literacy even, you could have students um, research about a particular excuse me, a particular author for this example, it was Shakespeare, where maybe they're laying out how a stage would be set um, when, when that type of performance would have been um, 
done at that time and include your text boxes in. Um, one key thing, if you are going to add text boxes in, make sure the text box is filled because uh, that was something through trial and error, I realized, why can't I see my text that's showing up? And it's because the text boxes need to be filled. Create interactive board games. Big shout out to the ADE class of 2019 for helping me out with this back in, um, I think it was January. And then the fantastic Miss Emma Oxley, who played with me uh, live all the way from South Africa. We had a go on our AR Guess Who game, um, which was really fun. But this is something that you could create these types of content um, for students, and then they could go ahead and play together, either you know, Battleship, they could play Guess Who, or they could play Scrabble, and you could have almost two students with their iPads back to back and then playing against each other in their own setups, which is really fun. And by the way, that word is not brothel, that word is brother. So just so we're clear on that. Okay, so those are some examples I wanted to share with you, but now um, I am gonna talk more about AR Maker, the app. So for those who are not too familiar with it, simply put, AR Maker is an augmented reality grid-based playground for the use of 2D and 3D shapes um, and images. So it's very, very simple, a very easy to use interface. Um, and it's a great sort of starting point before you move into something more complex like Reality Composer. So when you open AR Maker, this is what you're going to see. Um, very, very basic interface. They have some preloaded templates for you with content ready to go ahead and play with. There's mythical creatures, there's three little pigs, there's space, there's London, there's um, I think Tokyo, and then there's an under the sea one. But there's also a section right there at the top left for you to create your own scenes. So everything that I've shown you as the previous examples, those were all made with the uh, create your own scene um, option there. If you look at the very bottom, you have three options as well. Templates, my scenes, and my stories, uh, sorry, my library. So if we look at my scenes, if you've created anything in AR Maker, um, maybe you've done it at home and you're prepping it ahead of time to bring into school, you can absolutely save it to um, be used later on. And so um, just make sure that when you've set up a scene, like my ocean animals one was really quite complex, make sure that you save it so you can always reload it again um, at another time. At the moment, unfortunately, there is not the option for you to set up a scene and then share it with someone else. I'm really hoping that after talking to the developers uh, of the app that this will be a feature coming because I think it will be extremely beneficial for teachers to be able to set up um, an AR scene and for them um, to be able to sort of airdrop it or share it to, to students so they can load it. You also have um, your library. So anything that you bring in to AR Maker to be used in content will be saved in your library. Um, and when I say anything, I, I really mean anything. So um, make sure that you continuously go through and purge um, any content that you no longer need to use because it will save everything that you bring in and you will have to scroll through and scroll through um, to get back to some of the older content that you want to use. But this is where you can um, see all the content that you've brought in. So we're going to take a look at um, creating your own scene. So when you open it, the first thing the iPad wants to do is scan and it's looking for a flat surface. So it's good to do this either with a darker um, surface. Maybe you can put down like, for example, for um, thanks to Matt Pullen. I know you're here. Uh, thank you for the recommendation of a Lego board. This is just to help you get a grid um, to pull up and then you can take that board away once you've got your grid. Um, and it's good to do this when you have some good lighting as well. So you can see now that the grid has popped up. And the more that you scan, the more that you move around, the bigger the grid gets. And if you do this outside, I, I haven't really seen a limit to how big you can make your grid. Maybe someone else has. Um, but yeah, I've done really, really big displays outside with this. And so um, just the more light you have and the flatter that it is, the, the better um, space you're going to have to work with. And then once you've got your grid, you just tap on it and a target should appear. I'm just seeing why there's a delay in the pictures here. There we go. Um, so this is your target. And this will tell you where you're gonna be. Oh, where's it going? Does not wanna show you guys the target. Oh, there we go. Um, so the target is where you're going to be placing something and it will move around as you adjust the camera angle of the iPad, um, either close to you or far away, but it will always work within the um, parameters of the grid that you've determined. And just to go over the tools on the right hand side, you have your redo and undo um, buttons if you make a mistake, if you want to bring something back in. The place button is when you're going to be um, placing something right there 
uh, in the grid. And then you have arrows. So you have a couple of options. You can either put something in and have it just stand up or you can actually elevate it up in the air. Um, and so those arrows would allow you to do that. However, you do max out at a certain height. So if you're gonna be raising something up, just be aware that you are gonna reach a, um, a restricted height at some point. Um, but then also your items, you can either have them standing or you can lay them flat. So just by flicking on the item with your finger, can either be standing up or it can be laying down. Now on the left side of the top left corner there, those three lines, that's your menu. So you can either um, reset your scene. So you just made a mess and you need to completely start again, click re um, reset. Then you have save to save your scene that you've already created to come back to and use it later, or you quit and quit will just erase everything and take you back to the main menu. Underneath that on the left side, the arrow there will just shrink that sidebar away so you have more space in your grid to work. New is where you're going to add in um, any new content that you want to uh, bring into AR Maker. And then you can see everything that I've brought into AR Maker, you just are going to scroll all the way through. Unfortunately, it is very limited in, in, in everything you have in there. I must have over 400 different pieces of content and it goes in chronicle, chronological order. So if there's something that I want from maybe months ago, I'm going to have to do a lot of scrolling to go and find it. Um, I'm hoping maybe they'll change that and make it a little bit easier to, to see everything, but for now it's just done chronologically like that. So when you click on new, this is what you're gonna see. It's your sort of design area. At the bottom, you've got some different shapes. You've got a flat plane, and this is when maybe you're bringing something in you've already created. Then you've got uh, three-dimensional shapes. You've got a sphere, a cylinder, um, a cube, and a cone. And you can either draw, color, write, or you can wrap an image that you've created around those shapes. Um, and that's really quite fun, but it does take a bit of tweaking to get the hang of it. Um, and as you notice, that grid is a perfect square. So any content that you bring in, if it does not fit inside that perfect square, it's gonna get cut off. So just a tip going forward. On the left side, you've got your paint tool. So if you want to draw, if you wanna do some freehand uh, design, you can use the paint tool. And it works in the same way as some of the other digital tools where you can change the color, you can change the thickness of it. You've got the camera, so you can take a picture directly into AR Maker um, and it will save it within the app, or you can open your folder and that will open your camera roll for you. So that's really the design area. So here you go, you can see a sphere that I brought in with the word hello. And if I was um, to actually rotate that, you would see the word hello rotate around um, as well on the shape. Let's see if we can get the next scene to come up. This was my Ocean Zones um, one that you just saw before wrapped around a cylinder. And another great tip is if you make anything that is sort of transparent or translucent or opaque, um, it will look that way in AR Maker as well. So that's really quite nice if you're building something like a house and you wanna have some windows to be able to see through, um, you can design it that way and then you could put content inside that house and be able to see through whatever is coming through as being transparent. One other really, really helpful thing is that all your content that you create does not have to be done digitally. So this is helpful for early childhood or lower school teachers um, whose kids are not confident yet at drawing. So this is a, a drawing that my five-year-old daughter did um, that I used for an example. Um, and I know it can be really tricky to get the little kids to sit and draw on an iPad. They get frustrated or they push too many buttons. Um, but with AR Maker, they can take a photograph of something that they've drawn on paper or even an art project if they want, and then they can bring it in that way. And you can use the scissor tools, um, just like you would maybe in a tool like Pic Collage, to cut out anything that you don't want. And so you can see I'm going along with my finger and it looks black, but all it's doing is just taking out anything that I don't want. Um, and this is a really easy thing for little kids to do because all they have to do is touch the scissors and then move their finger to trace around and cut out any of the piece of the picture that they don't want to have in there. And so it's a really nice way of combining sort of the analog with the digital, especially for younger kids or even kids that are not very confident um, in doing digital designs to still be able to use their own drawings in um, AR Maker. And so I'll just see if it gets all the way through. It's being a little bit slow at the moment, but um, you'll be able to see what that character would then uh, look like. And so this is a nice thing for, for digital storytelling or for making um, an example, oh, this is my family and bringing those characters in and, and having that display set up in that way. So yeah, then you can go through with the scissors, just cut out anything else that you don't want, and then it will save it into your library to be used in AR Maker. So now we should see it save. 
And then I'm going to bring it back into uh, the grid here. And uh, one other thing to mention is there are certain animations or behaviors that you can attach to the items that you put in there. If you see in the bottom left corner, or sorry, bottom right corner, um, the character is going to appear and then there's a menu that pops up. So you can have things blink and pulse or um, rotate or spin or even orbit and go all the way around the grid. So this one has the character um, spinning, so which is really quite nice. So content creation and importing to AR Maker. We're going to get hands on now. Um, so this is where you're going to need your iPad with your pencil um, and keynote. And I'd like to see what you can create that's sort of all about you. So this was my um, sample where uh, I've lived most of my life in Arizona, despite the fact that I'm living in the UK now. That is my Memoji. Um, I like to consider myself a creative person. So I have the clip art from Keynote and then obviously the love for AR. So what I'd like to see if you guys can do for the next 10 minutes or so is using clip art and drawing features of Keynote, create some items that represent who you are that you can then bring into AR Maker. So some examples might be flags from countries that you're associated with or drawings of your favorite foods or languages that you speak. Um, or if you wanna try and draw your country or bring that country clip art in, um, please do. But uh, feel free also to bring in photos from your camera roll. And then if you are willing to share at the end, please volunteer, because uh, we'd love to see what you come up with. So at this moment, you guys have about 10 minutes um, to go ahead and see what you come up with. Um, and then hopefully we can, we can share a few examples. So you can go ahead and unmute yourselves now if you want to chat. So if you want to uh, ask me any questions, I'll be happy to answer them while we get those uh, 10 minutes of work time going. So um, one tip as well, when you're working in Keynote um, is to uh, set your slide side to be um, a square. So you do this by going to the ellipsis and going down to document setup and go to your slide size. And you wanna make sure that it's a square. And the reason you're going to do that is that, uh, like I mentioned before, AR Maker will make everything come through in those parameters. And so if you just set up your, your whole slideshow ahead of time uh, to be square, you won't run into that issue and you'll know sort of your parameters that you're working within. Okay. So I'm just going to do very crude drawing of the sun here. But. You can talk to me if you want. Hi, Lindsay. Just saying hello. <laughs> so you're not lonely. Makes you feel like you're going a bit mad, actually. <laughs> Talking to myself. Well, it looks like everyone's busy drawing in Keynote, so you've got everyone hooked. That's good. Hi, Lindsay. It's um, James. Can you hear me? Yep. And um, I, I'm finding it hard to get a. I'm using a, trying to put my scene on a desk at the moment. Okay. And it's not um, picking up. It's not giving me a platform. It's not giving you the grid? No. Is that because the desk is too small, do you think? No, um, probably either it's a lighting issue um, or it needs it needs something underneath to just find um, find a flat surface first. I've got only white desks in my house and so I have to constantly put color down in order for the grid to work. Um, so I don't know if that might be something to try, maybe put like a placemat down or, or we've got, you know, the Lego board example works. Okay, cool. I'll try. Um, someone asked about the background. I typically like to work with the white background um, because at the end, um, if you're going to do an image, uh, image like this where you're hand drawing it, you need to set your background to be no fill. And if I start doing it on a black one, I'll forget that I haven't done the no fill. And so then I will 
export everything, bring it into AR Maker, and realize, ah, I, I didn't do the no fill. So I start with white, and then as you can see, some of the other images here that I previously did, um, I then went and took the, the background out right after. But this is just a, a nice way of seeing what you're going to draw, where you're going to fill in, uh, and that sort of thing. So um, good question. Very good question. Glad to hear that your seven-year-old is trying it as well. Fantastic. Lindsay, I've, I've taken a photograph. I've, I've, I love giraffes, so I've got a giraffe in my office here. Okay. So I've taken a photograph of this on, on, um, on my desk, which is kind of an oak color. I'm assuming then if I take that into Keynote and then do the instant alpha trick in Keynote and then export, it's going to be much better than doing this in the app itself. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, if, yeah, I'm if you're going to use... App, I'm getting if you're gonna use a photo, sorry, if you're going to use a photo, yeah, I'd recommend bringing it into Keynote first. Um, and, and one of my quick tips at the end of this is just, um, I like using Keynote because then you can just sort of organize all your content for different scenes in one bundle. Um, and, uh, and, and so if you've got pictures that you're going to use ahead of time, you can just bring them in and remove the background. Whereas if you've got little kids um, who maybe are not quite confident with Keynote yet, having them just do a regular drawing, bring it into AR Maker and bypass the keynote stage uh, might be simpler for them because really only the one tool they have to work with then is just AR Maker and using the scissors. So it simplifies that process. But if you're, if you're um, you know, an older student or if you're planning to use pictures ahead of time, just bring them into keynote and move the background in that way. Oh, well, thanks. So we've got about half the time left, about five more minutes. Um, if, uh, if you are um, getting ready to go ahead and export your images, make sure that your uh, background is set to no fill. And when you go to export an images, let's see if it's going, make sure it's PNG. And then down there at the bottom, make sure it says transparent background. Um, and that will make sure that all your images go through with uh, the no fill background, and then they'll be able to just be brought into AR Maker. So when you export, you just your, sorry. Hi, Lizzie. It's James again. Hello. Okay, I've got I've got a scene here. Um, it's hanging off the desk, though. Can I um, adjust the size of it, if you know what I mean? Can I? Um, with the grid size, you mean? Yeah. Can I move it so that it's not hanging off the desk? Uh, mm, you could save the scene, and then you could quit, and then load the scene in a different area, if that's what you mean. Otherwise, if the grid is too small and you've already placed content, you have to start again, you have to restart. Okay, no, it's not too small, it's, it, it's too big if you like, it's almost hanging off the desk and I tried to move it and it created another, um, I've got another dotty grid. <laughs> yeah, um, what, it, what AR Maker will do is it will try and give you multiple options of grids and sometimes they will look like they're overlapping and that's, that's normal. It will really only just select one of them um, when you go ahead and, and get ready to use it. But as far as setting up something and then trying to resize, that, that doesn't seem to be a possibility um, in AR Maker. So I guess one of the really nice things about this app is it's, it's very easy to use and it's very versatile. So um, I, if, if anyone <laughs> knows me or has worked with me knows I'm a, I'm a really big advocate for um, content creation versus content consumption. I do think there is, um, there is a, a valid point and, and purpose for content consumption where there's ready-made content for you to use, but I think it becomes definitely more meaningful to students when um, it's their own original work that they're bringing in. Um, and so that, that, uh, that's something I'm a really big advocate for, which is why I like AR Maker because it is just an open playground and there's, there's really no limit to what you can bring into it. And that makes it flexible for the, excuse me, for the age range. I know the existing content right now that they have in there does look a bit juvenile um, and looks more geared towards the primary, but there's sort of no limit for the age group that you can, that you could do this with. It really just depends on what type of content you're going to bring in. So is there anyone that has created a scene that they think they might be brave enough to share with us? Not one. <laughs> Not one person. <laughs> That's okay. 
Please also do try and attach um, behaviors, uh, the animations to, you know, animate the different things that you bring in there. Well, Matt's busy sketch noting. <laughs> Um, another quick tip I'll tell you, um, and, and it will be mentioned later on as well in this presentation, is AR Maker does have um, a built-in camera for screenshots and then a built-in um, recording for screen recording. However, I do not advise using AR Maker screen recording. Use the iPad one instead. And the reason why is that the AR Maker one has a delay and a bit of a buffering issue. So it will sort of look like this when you're um, replaying it. So definitely use the iPad one. The only downside there is that the buttons that are on the side of the screen will appear because you're, you're basically doing the iPad screen recording. However, you can crop that out in the edit feature of the photos after, um, so you don't have to have that included. So that's just another tip um, from experience of using this. All right, and we're just about out of time now for our 10 minutes. Um, so does anyone want to, to volunteer? Otherwise, I'll, I'll just move on to the next, the next part. Oh. I can show you a monster that I've just drawn. Oh, yes, please. Let me go ahead and just um, stop this one here. You should have the ability to share um, your screen. Uh -huh. But has it been saved? Wait a second. Uh, should be. Okay, I'll share my screen because I cannot see it in my gallery. Let me try again. No, I'll share the screen. Okay. But don't laugh. I'm terrible at drawing. Can you see it? So it's spinning. It should oh, spin. lovely. Right. It should spin. Is it spinning? Yeah, it, a little bit. It, it looks like it's a very short video, but I get the idea that you'd created this scene and then it was rotating. So really well done. But what I missed here, uh, I would love one day to see that in AI, I can add movies so I can animate things uh, with Keynote mm -hmm. and then use them here. Yeah, I think that's something that a lot of people um, have requested from the developers um, because we are such big advocates for animating in Keynote and just being able to bring those types of things in would, would really make a world of difference. So I, I don't know if that will happen, but I know it has been requested um, many times to the developers. But thank you for sharing. Is there anyone else that would like to be willing in sharing what they've created? Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, move on then to the last part. If I can get this to come back up. Okay. So if I just go back in here. Okay. So here were the, the final quick tips um, I wanted to share. So again, the first one and the main one is be, because of the importance of being able to do videos um, of what you make in AR Maker is use the iPad screen recording feature, not the one in the app. Um, because we are gonna be moving to some form of blended learning, distance learning, this is a great opportunity for kids to still do AR um, with their devices, but using the collaborate feature in Keynote so that they can work with shared images. So you can still assign different types of projects um, for students and they can do it through distance learning. They could work through uh, the collaborate feature in Keynote to make uh, drawings and images for a project and then upload those into their own um, AR maker on, on the iPad. PNG files definitely seem to work the best. Um, again, I, I have a preference for Keynote, but if you want to use something else like Procreate, um, absolutely go ahead. Any kind of it, um, any kind of drawing tool that allows for PNG files with transparent backgrounds will work just fine. Um, again, I'll mention scenes currently can be saved but not shared. Always start with a square slide um, in Keynote. Any opaque or transparent items will appear that way in AR Maker and just periodically go through and clean out the library of content um, so that it doesn't all pile up. 
Um, just to finish off, I have got three books about AR um, that are available for free in the iBook store. There's Exploring the Alphabet with AR, which is more of an early childhood, um, sort of young, lower school age to set up scavenger hunts for different letters and um, CBC words or sight words. There's What Makes Me Me, which looks at um, using the animation features of Keynote with an AR app called iJack. And that allows students to make a silhouette using the tools from um, the Everyone Can Create. Um, I think it's the photography section of the curriculum to make a silhouette and then to animate different things to appear when their silhouette is scanned. And then the last book, My Journey Through Augmented Reality, sort of documents a lot of the things that I learned during my 25 days of AR challenge on Twitter. Um, and so all of them are free. Please, if they're helpful to you at all, have a look at them. Um, that's why they're there. If you want to connect with me, these are ways uh, that you can do that. I'd love to see what you end up coming up with. Um, I am on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and then I do have a new website, uh, innovateeducate.com. And last but not least, I'd love to see what you are going to walk away with from this session. So if you are a Flipgrid fan, please go ahead and put up a video of what you're walking away from this session with. Um, the password is AR and EDU 2020. Or if you want to share on Twitter, hashtag AR and EDU 2020. And please do tag me so that I can see um, what you've created. So I'm going to open it up now if there are any further questions. Um, Anything that you need to need me to clarify, or if you have any questions going forward, anything at all. Hi, Lindsay. Um, I've used this a little bit with my class, and I found some of the kids' iPads it just wouldn't work on. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the cutoff tends to be? Um, from you mean from the version or from the operating system? Uh, yeah, I guess either. I think if they're physically, the iPads are probably physically too old to have been updated to the iOS. Um, so it worked really well for some kids and for others it just wouldn't work at all. Um, I think it's iOS 12, um, it'll work. And then obviously iOS 13. <clears throat> oh, Ewan's putting in the, the iPad fifth gen and later have AR kit. So if it's an older device, um, older than that, that would have an impact. And then obviously the operating system as well. But uh, I've seen it work with iOS 12 and iOS 13, no problem. Right, thanks so much. This was great to see different ideas of how to use it. No problem. Okay, any other questions? All right, thank you very much guys. I look forward to seeing um, what you come up with and following up with, um, if, if you want to show me a photo, by all means, yep, yeah, go for it. Let me go ahead and... Hey, fantastic, look at that. Love it, really well done. Thank you so much. Thank you guys, have a good rest of your day and hopefully see some of you again